Hi, my name is Gwen McHale. I'm a somatic therapist and educator and I've been making a series of little videos to put online whenever I feel inspired about some aspect of my work. So this is the second one of the series. The last one, which I posted yesterday, had me really encouraging you to treat yourself with kindness. That as a practice can be life transforming. So it is, seems to be quite a common feature of us people to try not to feel our feelings or when we do feel something if it doesn't make logical sense then we dismiss it we minimize it we criticize ourselves for it and we kind of try to shove it back down as best we can which of course as we all know is going to have disastrous long-term consequences so as I was speaking about that in the last video and you can kind of scroll down the page there and see if you can find it if you haven't heard it yet I was suggesting that we might um, treat ourselves as we might a scared child when we feel afraid or treat ourselves like a loved one who's grieving. Um, and if we can do that for ourselves, that, that puts us on a path of healing rather than a path of pure suffering. So I wanted to speak a little bit more about that aspect today. And I suppose the reason I say treat yourself like a scared child, for example, is because often that is what we're meeting in ourselves when we're scared. You know, it's really common for people to say things like, oh, I just feel like such a crybaby. I don't know what's wrong with me. Or, um, you know, I'm just being really childish. I'm being really unreasonable. How I'm feeling is completely out of proportion to what's going on. If you hear yourself saying things like that, the chances are that actually what's arising in you is a child part, is something from your past that is unresolved. And it is so important that we can meet that part with compassion and recognition and love as best we can. Because the reason things don't get healed and the reason things stick around inside us is because they weren't met with that originally. So if as a child I Mm, I was really afraid of the dark and for whatever reason my parents really couldn't tolerate me being afraid and they criticized me for being afraid or they belittled me for it then I might have over layered that um, very natural fear with shame and feeling like there's something wrong with me and you know it's not okay to feel this fear and uh Later on in life, you know, that fear can get triggered again for whatever reason. Things get triggered all the time and we're being triggered a lot at the moment but because of this pandemic. And uh, the fear will arise. Now, if I'm able to bring conscious presence to that and to recognize, oh, I'm really scared. Wow, okay. And to be able to recognize that this fear is not in proportion to anything that's happening right now and to recognize okay this is a really really scared child part of me that is here right now and if I can recognize that I've already done something that didn't happen then I've recognized the fear and if I can welcome it even more it's like oh, yeah okay I feel scared absolutely normal and natural to feel scared everybody in the world feels scared it's okay I can let myself feel this fear. I can let myself feel it in my body. You know, what does it feel like in my body? Maybe it's a speed it up heart, a speed it up breath. Maybe it's a constriction in my belly. Maybe my back seizing up, headaches, you know, maybe just a little kind of a feeling of tightness and contraction. You're like, I'm gonna curl up. <sighs> Bringing breath to that and acknowledging, oh, here is a child, a really scared child. And what does this child need? Maybe the child needs just to be acknowledged, recognized. Maybe the child needs to feel held, to feel loved, to feel welcomed, not rejected. What the child will need is what the child didn't get originally. And you might not know, that's not a heady thing, you might not know what that is, but you might be able to sense it. You know, God, what would I long for right now? God, I just long for somebody to wrap me up in their arms and say, it's okay, I've got you. Or maybe what I long for is just a moment of peace and quiet. You'll get a sense when you ask yourself, what do I really need? What does this child in me really need right now? 
and then see if you can find your inner adult that part of you that is you know 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or whatever age you are that part of you that knows how to drive a car or has a mortgage or works in the bank or whatever it is you do that's very adult try and really connect with that part of you remind yourself oh okay I'm 45 I'm an accountant I drive a Mercedes you know or I'm 27 yeah cycle my bike to work every day you know whatever it is just remind yourself of the adulty thing that you do um and you know if you're lying down say this is what say you're freaking out when you're in bed you sit yourself up really helps or get up and stand up if you're sitting bring yourself up a level so you feel a bit taller and let yourself feel your full height you know I'm not very tall, but still, I, I'm taller than I was as a kid. You know, so you might be like, okay, I'm five foot five, or I'm six foot one, or four foot eleven, or whatever you are. Just feel your height, feel your long limbs. Okay, I am an adult now. Mm -hmm. And then see if you can take time as an adult to just sit with your little one, with this child part. You know, sometimes it helps to hold something. Hang on. This is Benji, my whole Benji. Benji can represent my inner child that's feeling scared. And I feel myself holding her. I feel myself sending her love and acceptance and letting her know that it is okay to be scared when I've got her. It's okay to feel sad and she can cry. That level of acceptance, we all long for that. And here is a way that I can give that to myself. The adult in me can offer this to the child in me. It's a way of reparenting. It can be extremely healing and can really shift us from a place of just pure suffering where everything I feel, everything the child in me feels, I identify with. And I think I'm freaking out in the here and now. And actually, something in the here and now is triggering the freaking out from way back then. Right? So, my tip of the day, number two. So, this is an option. You can find your Benji or your pillow or whatever it is and just take time with it you know take time to connect with this object that might be representing a child aspect of yourself and when you feel your intense feelings and you know they're not in proportion to what's happening now you know if there's nothing life and death going on now and yet these feelings are really big then probably they're coming from the past probably there's an old trauma or injury or wounding that's being triggered it's a sign that some, there's something unresolved and of course, I would highly recommend getting help with that. A professional therapist would go a long way. And there's lots of really wonderful therapists available now. Lots of people working online. You don't have to put it off. Um, because you see, the thing is, the injuries that happen in relationship really can only be healed in relationship. That's not work we can do as individuals on our own. So what I'll do is I'll post underneath this... Um, some resources, some links that you can check out if you're interested in starting therapy, suggest some organisations that you can investigate, for example. Um, best of luck.